so very interesting. All right. So uh, I'd like to start with a few words of acknowledgement. Uh, first, I want to thank Chris Mesher for introducing me to this beautiful topic of monomial resolutions and for helping me during the process. Um, also, big thanks to my wife, Anissa, for her support and encouragement, for her infinite patience, and for typing the thesis. <laughs> and finally, I want to give thanks to God for giving me the resources to do this work and for helping me to get so close to the finish line. I can hardly believe that I am here today. Anyways, um, uh, we have to cross the finish line. So let's do some math. Uh, my dissertation is entitled Monomial Resolutions. Monomial resolutions were created by David Hilbert in 1890 or so with the purpose of studying what today we know as Hilbert functions. And they are the central object of my research. But before we give the definition of monomial resolution, let's set up our notation. So here we go. Notation. Throughout, the letter K will represent a field an arbitrary field, right? The letter S will denote a polynomial ring over K. And the letter M will represent a monomial ideal in S. is an ideal generated by monomials, that's simple, right? And it's a corollary to Hilbert's basis theorem that as, a, as an S module, M is finitely generated. Moreover, M is finitely generated by monomials. So we can represent M in the form M1, MQ with MI, a monomial, in S. So we fix our notation. Every time you see these letters, you know that they have this uh, specific meaning. right? Um, so now we want to give our first definition. We want to introduce the concept of uh, monomial resolution. The monomial resolution of the S module S over M is an exact sequence, an exact sequence, say, F of the form Fi, Fi minus 1, F1, F0, S over M, 0, and the maps Fi, F1, F0. So monomial resolution is an exact sequence of this form where each Fi is a free S module. Right? That's simple. Now there is a second uh, definition, which is closely related to this one, and it's the, the definition of minimal resolution, or minimal monomial resolution. Here it is. We say that F is minimal, or a minimal resolution, if for every uh, positive i, The entries of the matrix Fi associated to the map Fi is non invertible. Okay? Now let 
me explain this terminology. Why do we say that the resolution is minimal when this property is satisfied? Suppose for a second that um, for some, some index i, there is a matrix fi with one invertible entry, right? If this is the case, then the monomial resolution f of s over m can be decomposed in the form g plus the short trivial sequence 0, s, s, 0, where g is another monomial resolution of s over m. Now, you see, g is smaller than f in the sense that the, the ranks of the free modules in, in g are smaller than the ranks of the free modules in f. So f is not as small as possible. f is, is not minimal. On the other hand, if this property is satisfied, this decomposition is not possible. f is as small as possible, and that's why we say that f is minimal. Make sense? All right. Um, we said earlier then that um, monomial resolutions were created in the late 1800s, but the problem of studying minimal resolutions was posed by Kaplansky in the early 1960s. So we have been studying minimal resolutions for about 55 years. Now there are two main reasons why minimal resolutions are important. Number one, given a monomial ideal M, there are many monomial resolutions of this quotient. But the minimal resolution is unique up to isomorphism. Right. Number two, um, a minimal resolution encodes important information about the monomial ideal. For example, the, the very numbers of a monomial ideal, whatever this means, can be read off as the ranks of the free modules in a minimal resolution. So we care about minimal resolutions. And one of the main tools that I use in my work to, to find, to construct minimal resolutions is what we know as the Taylor resolution, which is a monomial resolution, not necessarily a minimal resolution. Um, after Diana Taylor, who created this resolution in her doctoral thesis in 1960. So let's do this construction. Let's construct the Taylor resolution. We start with a monomial ideal. This is an arbitrary monomial ideal. And for every subset of the minimal generating set, for every subset, let's say mi1, mis, of the minimal generating set, M1, MQ, where we can assume that these subindices are given in increasing order. Right. For every such subset of the minimal generating set, we create a formal symbol. mi1, mis, between brackets. Right? And we call this symbol a uh, Taylor symbol. So wait a minute, what, what are we doing here? We are constructing the Taylor resolution, which is an instance of monomial resolution. So we want to do something like this, an exact sequence. And we want to start with the free S modules, right? And these formal symbols will turn out to be the basis elements of each uh, free S module, right? That's, that's the plan. So for every S between 0 and Q, let Fs be the free S module with basis the set of Taylor symbols mi1, mis, all 
right? Where these are the Taylor symbols associated to subsets of cardinality S, right? Subsets of the minimal generating set of cardinality S. So how many such Taylor symbols do we have? Given by the combinations of Q choose S, you see in how many ways can you choose S elements from a set of Q elements? In combinations of Q choose S Taylor symbols associated to subsets of size S. Does this make sense? This is the most sophisticated thing we are going to do. So if we can go through this, the rest should be much easier. So in other words, um, that is Fs is this direct sum. Something like this. Correct? What is F? Uh, sorry, it's in the book. Nothing. Okay. Right. So what do we have so far? We have the freest modules. We have these guys here. And now we want to construct the maps. Alright? So the maps are as follows. Uh, let f0 from f0 to the quotient s over m given by this formula. This is the first uh, map in our resolution. You see, uh, this symbol corresponds to the subset, the only subset of cardinality 0. That's what it means. Now, uh, for every positive subindex, For every s between 1 and q, set um, fs from fs to fs minus 1 equal to the, the map defined as follows. sum with j from 1 to s of minus 1 to the j plus 1 times the least common multiple of the monomials contained in this Taylor symbol divided by the least common multiple of mi1 omit mij mis so we delete exactly one monomial from this list multiplied by the Taylor symbol mi1 omit mij mis this is how we define the map for every basis element and now we have to extend by linearity this is how we define the maps so we have we have the freest modules, we have the maps. What is the Taylor resolution? <coughs> the Taylor resolution, Tm, this is the notation we will use from now on. The Taylor resolution is denoted by Tm um, of S over M is the exact sequence the exact sequence Tm zero Fq Fq minus one etc F one F zero S over M zero and the maps Fq F one F zero. Now it's not obvious at all that this is a monomial resolution. We don't know if this is an exact sequence, right? But we will take it for granted, and instead of giving a proof of, of, uh, of that fact, we are going to construct the Taylor resolution in a particular case. This will clarify the situation a lot. So here is the example. If you have questions, just 
stop me. Yeah, and uh, so sorry, to follow my intuition, can I ask us to the question? Yes. So what is the special property of a Taylor resolution that makes it special? Or you are look, why are you looking at that to get a minimal from there? Right. Or no other resolution? Well, it has a lot of symmetry. symmetry. I like the way it's, it's defined. And but it has to have something special over other? Uh, or this? Well, in order to do what I did in my thesis, uh, other resolutions could have worked. Ah. Other resolutions could have worked. Because okay. what I do is what we call consecutive cancellations. Starting with a monomial resolution, you make cancellations. You make the, the resolution smaller and smaller until eventually you get the minimal resolution. And you could, in principle, do it from something else. Yes, exactly. But there is a special reason why I chose the Taylor resolution. One is the symmetry, the beauty of the, the resolution. Uh, I think it's simple, even though it looks complicated, but if you compare to other resolutions, this is uh, simple, <laughs> I think. But there is another reason why I chose this resolution, and I will show you okay. in a couple of minutes. All right. What's the, what's the other construction and commuted algebra this looks like? Well, for example, uh, I studied the, the Lubeznik resolution, which is also a monomial resolution, not minimal in general, what and I could have... What other complex does it look like? What other complex? The scarf, scarf complex, you're talking about things like that. Another, another two-word thing that ends in complex. <laughs> <laughs> what if you resolve a complete intersection? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's Kazool. It's the Kazool complex, except it's ah, not. You know, it's essentially ah, the same sort of okay, thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you're familiar with the Kazool complex, it looks. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Also, we really don't know any other resolutions that that are general. If I if I hand you a monomial ideal and say find any resolution at all, you, you're basically your choices are do a long drawn out computer computation or do this. Uh, okay. Uh, there, so there's a few lesson. slightly intermediate things that that are much harder to define and don't really help. Well, and also there's a notion of simplicial resolution where you label a simplicial complex with your your uh, generators, and the Taylor one is the most natural because you just take the simplex where you have a vertex for each of the generators. Okay. So it's kind of the most natural way to okay, so it's a natural. Thank you, I'm sorry. So I'd say that, that uh, the Taylor resolution gives a, a monomial resolution for every monomial idea. Um, there are other resolutions that work for some families of monomial ideas, but not in general. Okay. Right. So I was about to, to give it uh, an example of the Taylor resolution. So uh, we start with this monomial idea. So we assume that this is a monomial idea in a polynomial ring with at least three variables, A, B, C. Right. What is the Taylor resolution in this particular case? The resolution is given by the following construction, which I will explain in a second. What I am doing is follow the recipe, but I will talk about it in a minute. This is what we could call the, the support of the resolution because we don't see the maps here. But let me explain what I did so far. To begin with, with these arrows should be horizontal. The only reason to use vertical arrows is to, to save space. But I am following this recipe. You see, uh, what we should see here is F0, F1, F2, F3. What is F0? F0 is the freest module with basis the Taylor symbols associated to subsets of cardinality 0. Because there is only one such subset, which is the empty set, this is the only basis element. What is F1? F1 is the freest module with basis the Taylor symbols corresponding or associated to subsets of cardinality 1. We have three subsets of cardinality 1, and that's why you see three Taylor symbols, and so on. That's, that's the idea. 
And what we should do next is, well, construct the maps. Um, the maps, right? Instead of giving the, the maps, we are going to give the matrices, also called uh, differential matrices. And I will ask you to trust me here, because if we have to do the computations, it will take a long time. Well, basically, we are going to apply this, this formula, right? So uh, I will ask you to trust me here. These are the, the entries. The entries are uh, C minus BQ a square, and then we have minus d cube, a square, zero, minus c, zero, a square, zero, um, minus c, b cube, a square, b cube, c, one, and that's it. So this is the Taylor resolution for this monomial idea, right? This would be M0. Okay. We'll talk about this resolution in a minute. Let me give a second uh, example. Let M1 be a similar monomial ideal, if you think about it. This is A square B cube AB, which is a monomial ideal with three generators the first two generators are the same as before, so the, this looks similar, but this is intentional. What is the Taylor resolution in this case? Then the Taylor resolution is given by this construction. Again, we are following the recipe, the same, the same formula, and we get something similar in principle. And now we have to construct the differential matrices, and they are one um, minus b squared a, and now we have minus b cube a squared zero. And then we have uh, minus b, 0, a. And finally, 0, a, minus a, and b square. And here we have a square, b cube, a, b. And here we have 1. All right. If you look at these two Taylor solutions, they look similar, right? But there is an important difference. Consider these three matrices. If you look at the entries of these three matrices, you will see that the entries are either 0 or monomials of positive degree, which are non-invertible entries of the polynomial ring. So this is a minimal resolution. This matrix doesn't count because if you look at the definition, we start counting with i equal to 1. right? So we look at these three uh, matrices. The Taylor resolution is always a monomial resolution, but not always a minimal resolution. This is a minimal resolution. But what about this one? This is not a minimal resolution because we have an invertible entry here. So that's the main difference between these two resolutions. Um, we will come back to this example, and we will explain why this resolution is minimal and this is not. But for now, we are content with this observation. So at this point, I think it's convenient to, to discuss the main problem that I wanted to solve when I started my thesis. So let me share this result with you, or this problem with you. Um, people who work in this area of commutative algebra are interested in the following problem. Um, they want to find families of monomial ideals whose minimal resolutions 
admit a general description. So the problem sounds complicated. Let me express the problem in this way. We will break it down into two problems. People who work in, in monomial resolutions are interested in solving the following two problems. First, how to construct interesting families of uh, monomial ideals. And number two, how to give a general description of their minimal resolutions. So first you have to find the family of monomial ideals and then give a general description of their minimal resolutions. This was the problem that I wanted to, to solve when I started the thesis. And to be frank, I was stuck for a while. I didn't know how to find an interesting family. I didn't know what an interesting family was, much less how to give the general description of the resolutions. But at some point, I, I got an idea. I thought that it might be convenient to attack the problem backwards, in a sense. I started with point two. I decided that the general description would be the Taylor resolution, right? The Taylor resolution. And the Taylor resolution would describe the minimal resolutions of what family if I didn't have a family, right? I, I had to find this, this family. But the point was this, you see, that the Taylor resolution is minimal in some cases and non-minimal in some other cases. So I would start with the Taylor resolution. I would say this is the general description of the minimal resolutions of some family of monomial ideals. And then my job would be to find that family, right? So, and this is my criterion to, to decide when a family is interesting. If I came up with a family of monomial ideas for which the Taylor resolution was not minimal, to me that was non interesting, right? <laughs> and if I came up somehow with a family of monomial ideas for which the Taylor resolution was minimal, that was an interesting family, right? That was my, my criteria. So uh, eventually I found that family, and what I want to do is show you um, this family. Uh, I anticipate that I call them the family of dominant ideas. So I want to define the dominant ideas. Here is the definition. Let G be a set of monomials in S, right? G is a set of monomials. <coughs> An element in G, a monomial in G, is called dominant it's called dominant if there is a variable, a variable X in our polynomial ring S with the following property such that for every m prime in G minus m, for every other monomial in G, the exponent with which x appears in the factorization of m is larger than the exponent with which x appears in the factorization of m prime. Let's interpret the definition one more time. We start with a monomial in G. G is a set of monomials. We pick this monomial m. And we say that m is dominant if for some variable in our polynomial ring, the following property holds. The exponent with which x appears in the factorization of m is larger than the exponent with which x appears in the factorization of every other monomial of this set. Sometimes I think that the, the examples should be the definitions because it's there when we understand the concepts. In a second, I will give you uh, an example. But let me continue with this definition. Suppose that this is the case, that 
m is the dominant monomial because there exists such an x. Well, if this is the case, if this is the case, we say that m is dominant in the variable x. But what we want to define is dominant ideals. You see, this is the concept of a dominant monomial. We pick this element and we say, well, it, the monomial is dominant if this is satisfied. right? But I want to define what the dominant ideal is. So here is the definition. A monomial ideal is called dominant ideal, dominant ideal, if every monomial in, let's say, in its minimal generating set, in its minimal generating set is dominant. Let's interpret this. We have a monomial ideal M, right? Capital M, something like this. Um, this monomial ideal has a minimal generating set, let's say M1, M2, MQ, right? We say that the monomial ideal is dominant if every monomial of the minimal generating set, not just one monomial, but every monomial of the minimal generating set is dominant, right? So here is an illustration of this uh, definition. Example. Let's explain the first part of the definition with an example. Let G be the set A square B, B square, AC, BC. Right? This is a set of monomials, a set with four monomials. We claim that the first monomial is dominant. Let's see if this property is satisfied. This monomial is dominant because there is one variable, A, such that the exponent with which A appears in the factorization of this monomial, 2, is larger than the exponent with which A appears in the factorization of the other three monomials. Here A appears with exponent 0, here A appears with exponent 1, here A appears with exponent 0, but here A appears with exponent 2, which is larger. So this monomial is dominant in A. Likewise, this monomial is dominant because there is one variable, B, such that the exponent with which B appears in the factorization of this monomial, 2, is larger than the exponent with which B appears in the factorization of the other three monomials. So the first two monomials are dominant, and you can verify that the last two uh, are not. Does this make sense? Is, is this clear? Well, AC has C. Okay. Ah, but, it, okay. but there is another there is a one tie. with the same. You see, there is a tie, yeah. The exponents are 1 and 1. So, so the exponent should beat the should exponent. Should beat, not yeah. equal. Right. And it's strictly larger. Exactly, exactly. So these two uh, monomials are dominant, but AC and BC are not. So this is the concept of being dominant or dominant monomial. What about dominant ideas? What can we say about it? Well. Uh, let M0 be the monomial ideal A squared BQC and M1 equal to um, A squared BQ AB. I'm sure you identify these two monomial ideals because they are the ideals that I gave in the first example, right? M0 and M1. Now, note that uh, this monomial ideal is dominant. This monomial is dominant in A, this one is dominant in B, this one is dominant in C. So every monomial of the minimal generating set is dominant. This is a dominant ideal, but this one is not dominant. Because this monomial is dominant in A, this one is dominant in B, but this one is not a dominant monomial. So this monomial ideal is not dominant. One more observation. This is a dominant ideal. Its Taylor resolution is minimal, right? 
this monomial ideal is not dominant. Its Taylor resolution is not minimal. And this is not a coincidence, right? This is the main result we want to, to prove in this talk. The, the theorem that they want to prove says the following. Uh, the Taylor resolution is minimal if and only if the monomial ideal is dominant. That's the goal, right? Uh, but before we can prove the theorem, we need to give one more definition and one lemma. The definition is very simple. Um, the multi-degree, the multi-degree of a Taylor symbol M I one, M I S of the Taylor resolution T M, which we denote M deg, well let's say denoted, denoted M deg of M I one, M I S is M deg of M I one, M I S equal to the least common multiple of M I one, M I S. So the multi degree of a Taylor symbol is nothing but the least common multiple of the monomials contained in the Taylor symbol. That's it. That's the definition. Now, the main theorem we want to prove relies on the following lemma. So let's take the lemma. lemma. If sigma 1 and sigma 2 are two Taylor symbols of the Taylor resolution with equal multi-degree with equal multi-degree then sigma 1 and sigma 2 must contain the same dominant monomials. We are not going to prove the dilemma, but we want to interpret the lemma. So the idea is this. Let's say that we have a monomial ideal M equal to M1, MQ, as usual. Well, something we can always do is classify these monomials as being dominant or non-dominant, right? So let's say that R of these uh, monomials are dominant, and the other S monomials are non-dominant. So V stands for dominant, N stands for non-dominant. And now suppose that we have two Taylor symbols with equal multi-degree. We are under the hypothesis of this lemma. Two Taylor symbols with equal multi-degree. And now suppose that sigma 1 is D1, um, D2, D5, N1, N3. This Taylor symbol. This is just an example, right? Well, since sigma 2 has the same multi degree, according to the lemma, sigma 2 may differ from sigma 1 in the non dominant monomials that it contains, let's say N2, N3, something like this. But the dominant monomials must be the same. D2, D5. Right? So the lemma says that if two Taylor symbols have the same multi degree, they contain the same dominant monomials. Correct? Now we are ready to prove the main theorem. resolution is minimal if and only if the monomial ideal is dominant. Now let's take a look at the problem one last time. This is the problem I wanted to solve. I was looking for an interesting family 
And as I said, the interesting family is the family of dominant ideals. And I had to give the general description of their minimal resolutions, which will be the Taylor resolution. That means that what I had to prove is this implication. Every time I pick a dominant ideal from our family, I had to prove that the Taylor resolution was its minimal resolution, this implication. And this, is, this was my first result. But later on, um, I realized that the converse was also true. If the Taylor resolution is minimal, the monomial ideal must be dominant because there are no other monomial ideals for which the Taylor resolution is minimal. So this is a complete characterization of when the Taylor resolution is minimal. And I like this result because it opened the door to several other results in, in my thesis. Um, so I am fond of this result. We will take this implication for granted. After all, all we need to prove in order to solve this problem is this implication, right? So here is the proof. We start with an arbitrary Taylor symbol. Let m i 1, m i s be a Taylor symbol of Tm. Okay? Then f s of m i 1, m i s is according to our construction of the data resolution, this is how we constructed the maps, this is the sum with j from 1 to s of minus 1 to the j plus 1 times the least common multiple of m i 1 m i s, the monomials contained in the Taylor symbol, divided by the least common multiple of m i 1 omit m i j <coughs> m i s multiplied by m i 1 omit m i j m i s between brackets. Now, what are we doing here? We want to prove this implication, right? So we need to prove that the Taylor resolution is minimal. By definition, a monomial resolution is minimal if the entries of the differential matrices are non-invertible, right? Now, what are the entries? of the differential matrices in this case. Well, think in terms of linear algebra, right? In linear algebra, you have two vector spaces and a linear transformation. And by fixing one basis of the first vector space and one basis of the second vector space, you can identify the linear transformation to a matrix, right? And what are the entries of this matrix? Well. What you do is this, you express the image of every basis element of the first vector space as a linear combination of the basis elements of the second vector space. That's what you do in linear algebra. And these coefficients that you get here determine the column vectors, right? Well, in monomial resolutions, we do the same. We don't have linear transformations. We have homomorphisms of free modules, but the construction is the same. So if we want to prove that the Taylor resolution is minimal, we have to show that the entries are non-invertible, which is equivalent to proving that these coefficients are non-invertible, right? So let's, let's analyze this quotient here. Let's call it alpha. Of course, the coefficient also has this factor, minus 1 to the j plus 1. But you see, it doesn't change anything. If alpha happens to be invertible, minus 1 to the j plus 1 times alpha is invertible. And if alpha is not invertible, this product is not invertible. So basically, this quotient, alpha, de determines if this theorem is true or false. Right? Now, what are the possibilities for alpha? We have this quotient, right? We have a bunch of monomials in the denominator, and we take the least common multiple, which happens to be another monomial. Then we have a bunch of monomials in the numerator, and we take the least common multiple, which happens to be another monomial. So we have a quotient of monomials. But the set in the denominator is a subset of the set in the numerator. So this monomial divides this monomial, right? So what are the possibilities? Well. If the least common multiples are the same, if the monomials are the same, the quotient will be 1, alpha equal to 1, which is an invertible entry. We don't want that. Right? 
The other possibility is that uh, alpha b, a monomial of positive degree. These are the only two possibilities. Either alpha equals 1 or alpha is a monomial of positive degree. But monomials of positive degree are non-invertible in our polynomial ring. That's what we want. Right? That's, that's what we want. OK, so let's, let's put this into words very quickly. Note that either alpha equals 1 or alpha is a monomial of positive degree, but I don't care about that. What I want to say is or alpha is non-invertible. This is what I want to prove. Right? If we prove this, we're done. So how are we going to prove this? By proving that alpha equal to 1 is not possible. That's the idea. So let's assume that alpha equals 1. If alpha equals 1, that means that numerator is equal to denominator. Then this common multiple of mi1 mis is equal to the least common multiple of mi1 omit mij mis. Right? But this are the multi-degrees of two Taylor symbols. Let's see. By definition, the multi-degree of mi1, mis is the least common multiple of these monomials. And by definition, the, the, the multi-degree of this Taylor symbol is this least common multiple. So we have this identity, which means that we have two Taylor symbols with uh, equal multi-degree. And now we look at the lemma. The lemma says that if two Taylor symbols have the same multi-degree, they must contain the same dominant monomials. But this is not the case. Because you see, we are under the hypothesis that M is dominant, which means that every monomial of the minimal generating set is dominant. Right? In particular, Mij is dominant. But Mij is not here. Mij it, it's here, but not here. So we have two Taylor symbols with equal multi-degree, which don't have the same dominant monomials. That's not possible. Well, so if this happens, then this is hap this happens, which is not possible by the lemma. The conclusion is that alpha, well, alpha is not equal to one, and therefore alpha is non-invertible. Now, um, I know that I, I have talked for a long time. Well, I don't know if you have the same impression as me, but I, I feel that I, I've talked a lot. So I don't want to develop new material on, on the work. But at the same time, I wanted to, to show you a second family of monomial ideals with its corresponding minimal resolution. So if you're so nice to stay with me for three more minutes, I will talk. Just talk about this, this other family. Can we do so? Mm. All right. So, um, so what is a dominant ideal? It's, it's an ideal whose minimal generating set contains only dominant monomials. Now we want to define the concept of a semi-dominant ideal. We say that the monomial ideal is semi-dominant if its minimal generating set contains exactly one non-dominant monomial. All the monomials are dominant, but one. That's why it's semi-dominant, almost dominant. All right. So. The interesting family is the family of semi-dominant ideals. Do you want an example? Here we have an example. Uh, this is a semi-dominant ideal because this generator or this monomial is, is not dominant. The other two are. So M1 is a semi-dominant ideal. Well, our interesting family is the family of semi-dominant ideals. And what is the general description of their minimal resolutions? Where the, the, the general description is given by the scarf complex. 
What is the scarf complex? The scarf complex is the chain complex obtained from the Taylor resolution by, uh, by eliminating those Taylor symbols whose multi-degree is common to other Taylor symbols. Um, maybe the definition looks confusing. Let me explain the definition with this, with this example. Look at this Taylor symbol. This one has multi-degree A squared, right? And we can verify that this is the only Taylor symbol with multi-degree equal to A squared. So we keep it. We don't want to eliminate this one. If you look at this Taylor symbol, well, you will see that it has multi-degree B cube. And there is no other Taylor symbol of, with multi-degree B cube. So we keep it. And we keep this because it has unique multi-degree, unique multi-degree, unique multi-degree, unique multi-degree. But all of a sudden, we find two Taylor symbols with the same multi-degree. Remember, it's the least common multiple. The multi-degree of this Taylor symbol is A squared B cubed. And so is the multi-degree of this Taylor symbol. They have the same multi-degree. So whenever we see ten Taylor symbols with equal multi-degree, we get rid of them. And now we need to adjust the, the matrices a little bit, because this Taylor symbol was responsible for the existence of this column. And this Taylor symbol was responsible for the existence of this column. What you see here now is the scarf complex. This is the scarf complex. By the way, notice that when we eliminated these two columns, we got rid of the only invertible element that we had. So it can be proven that the scarf complex is the minimal resolution of the semi-dominant ideals. And that's the second result. Um, well, there is more stuff in the thesis, but I think that you have a good picture of what I have done here, so I think I, I'll stop here. Okay. Any questions for your chairman? So you said, so I'm wasting your time a little bit. So you said that uh, whenever you have, you were able to reach a minimal resolution, then you have information like betting numbers. Mm -hmm. So your name is Dominant? Do you have a description of Dominant in terms of other invariants like betting numbers? Well, yes, we know the Betty numbers. Uh, in fact, in this case, in this particular case, the Betty numbers are easy. So we can say that Bi uh, of S over M is combinations of Q choose I, assuming that the minimal generating, minimal generating set of M has cardinality Q. So, and you can get to like a second definition of dominant. So a second characterization, you mean? Yeah. yeah, I have a theorem, actually, where I give several characterizations of the Taylor resolution. One is, so the, the following are equivalent statements. One, the Taylor resolution is minimal. Two, the monomial ideal is dominant. Three, the very numbers are like those. I see. Right? Uh, four, the projective dimension, whatever it means, uh, is Q. Five. And this, I have to give credit to Chef here, but uh, there is one more characterization that says that so the DSCM lattice is If and only if, true? Yes, right. 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 Okay. Other, other questions for you, gentlemen? Okay, let's thank you again. The committee will stay here and everyone else can step out for a few minutes.